Do y'all remember just a few years ago in the California fires, the news crews were there and they were showing everybody and they're running out of their houses with their, they got all their clothes and stuff and they're like holding on to them with dear life and throwing stuff in the cars and stuff. Meanwhile, the back of their house is on fire. You only had minutes to get out of there. And you could tell they're not prepared because the way they were just running in and out of the house, kids included, <laughs> while the house is on fire, trying to grab as much stuff as they possibly could, what they thought might be important. Now, I did put a poll out here not too long ago. And the poll was, if you had to leave your house in 10 minutes with your supplies, could you do it? Let's see how this poll turned out. Because this poll is the reason I'm doing this video today and I'm going to give you some pointers on what you really need to be doing and how to make this poll a lot better for the 366 people that did vote on this poll. Yes, no problem. Packed and ready. 19%. Only 19% out of 366 votes. Nope, I will jump in my car and leave as fast as possible. See ya, 7%. I actually thought that one would be higher. No, it's scattered all over my house in different rooms. 23%. Yes, but I wouldn't be able to get all the things I need in time. That was 50%. So we got some work to do here, folks, because we got to get this down to a, a time pattern here, how we need to work on this. Now, we all know that you need to have your bug out bags, your go bags. And in those bags, you want to make sure that you do have food and clothing, um, maybe a small first aid kit, uh, these type of things. So if you had to, that was the only thing you could grab you would have some way to survive, save 72 hours. All right, that should be all in there, ready to go. Your food and water, as I mentioned with your go bag, you know, you got to have, I would actually have another bag, either a go bag or a backpack or something that has water, has food in it, um, a can opener, maybe some way to cook, whatever. And it's all in that bag. So you could grab one bag, throw it in a vehicle, grab the other bag, throw it in a vehicle, and you'd be good to go. First aid is the same way. You grab your first aid kit, and you all should have a first aid kit. And these all should be either in a closet or in a room that is in the front of your house or by your garage or maybe in your garage, depending on where you live. If it doesn't get real hot, you can put it out in your garage. But with the heat dome that we've been having, you know, who's not hot? So, you know, having it somewhere towards the front of the house makes it easy, accessible, so you can grab and go. Put it into your coat closet or whatever. But having it somewhere, and if you have to, put it in a room, throw a sheet or something over it so nobody sees what it is, and go on about your merry way. Stash it behind your couch, you know? You can always just pull your couch out real quick, grab the bags, and you're out of there. Your clothing and shelter is another important thing. So you want to make sure you do have some change of clothes, uh, change of socks, uh, things of this nature. Um, having a tarp just to put up for a shelter and just a makeshift, uh, just to get you to where you're going or something, uh, just to get you out of the elements. Uh, if you have to pull over on the side of the road or something and whatever, you know, if you just had some way to give you a little shelter, maybe to get out and stretch and, you know, relax while you're trying to get to where you're going. Or if the worst case scenario, you broke down, your car stopped running, you ran out of gas, whatever it may be. And now you are walking, um, having that shelter with a just a regular tarp is key. Tools. Always have some type of a multi-tool. 
It can't hurt, doesn't take up that much room, doesn't weigh that much. But it could be a lifesaver. You know, a tool could be a multi-tool, could be a knife, a small hatchet, a small saw, something like that. It'll fit in one of your backpacks, and it's not really that big. Uh, some of them will attach to the outside of your backpacks, depending on the pack that you have. It's just something that you want to make sure that you do have. Now, if you do have a lot of important documents and stuff, you know, I have talked about you need to have these in bags, waterproof, fireproof bags and stuff that you can grab and go. And I would also keep in those bags maybe a little bit of cash on him because you just don't know what the situation is that you are having to evacuate from and you may not have time to stop at the bank and you know have a free cup of coffee and a donut and take money out of the bank you may just have to be leaving town now so if you have that extra cash and you have it in that bag with all your important papers and documents and everything else that would be a really time saver and a lifesaver i would highly suggest backing everything up on a thumb drive and making sure that you know this way you document everything that's in your house especially if you're dealing with a fire a flood a hurricane a tornado whatever it may be uh, this way you have proof of what was in there because more than likely once the storm goes through you're not going to find it it's going to be gone so having proof is a very very good thing you know and storage you know like i did say you know you need to make sure that you are storing these items depending on like wherever you do live it just depends on your climate um and this way here you could store these things right in your garage if it's not too hot and then you know you store them in your house and then maybe in the winter time, if it doesn't get that cold or whatever, you can put them out into your garage or they're right there. You know, you open the garage door and your car's right there. Or maybe your car's even in the garage. Even better. But here's the point, folks. You got to practice this stuff. This is a key point. Practice makes perfect. Once in a while. See how long it takes you. Once you get your stuff all gathered and you get it all put together, which where it should be, it shouldn't be scattered all over your house. It should be all accessible. It should be all ready. And this way here, you can grab the things you have to grab and get them into your car, get your family loaded into your car, you know, and then get out of there. Time is of the essence. And we have seen that over time, these, some people, you, you just wonder how they still are alive because of what they've been doing. These folks that I'm talking about, and it was all over the news. You know, the back of the house is burning down, it's on fire and everything else. And they're all running out the front door, kids included, and trying to carry out as much stuff as they can and cram it in a car before they took off. You know, personally, in that type of situation, the kids would be in the car. I'd be loading up all the bags and everything else that are ready to go. And, you know, I mean, with the fire, here's my thought. You knew it was coming. <laughs> Why did you wait? Why weren't you even prepared? I don't get it. It's like a hurricane. You know what's coming. Now a tornado and a flash flood, something like that, you don't know. So you got to be prepared to move quick. But these fires and hurricanes, you have plenty of notice. It's either real smoky or suddenly the wind starts to be blowing. And the next thing you know, it gets a little darker out. And then the next thing you know, the winds start picking up. And then the next thing you know, your fence goes bye-bye. And at that point, well, you're pretty much stuck where you are. But it's been all over the news, the radio, and everything else. And I'm pretty sure maybe some of your neighbors or something have heard something. Or like, you see everybody else leaving? You may want to think about getting the hell out of Dodge. Because if your friends and stuff are all going and it's just leaving you there, that's not really a good situation because now you don't have anybody to back up. You see what I'm saying? So if everybody else is trying to get out of Dodge, you might want to think about doing the same thing. Just saying, folks. I'm survival preparedness for beginners. I want to see people 
do a little bit better than what they're doing right now. Because that 10 minutes could be the difference between life and death. It's your family. Get organized. That's all it takes. And for the 7% that are just going to get in the car and take off, well, make sure you have stuff wherever you're going. You can always prep it there. So if you wanted to do that, you could. You just have to be prepared for that scenario. And hopefully, you make it to your destination with no problems. Because all your supplies behind you are gone. The only supplies left you have is wherever you left them. Till next time, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.